Be the best, then be vanglorious. This is the first annual summer solstice sale. On June 21st, get this Stargate tea for 100% off for one day only. On June 21st, the well-being of women determines the well-being of society. Know it, live it, love it. This is the first annual summer solstice sale. On June 21st, get your free tea today at Kim West That Shop. Rest into what it is today, but I miss that. That's the era. Right. Would you say that it was uh, a systematic approach by the, the label executives to do this? To like, you know, they seen that, okay, these people are starting to use this music now to liberate themselves, to fight against us, to free themselves. Let's change the frequency. Let's promote a different, you know, gangster rap, this, that. Do you think that the labels did that? Or do you think it was a con in concert between the labels and the rappers doing that? It was a bit, a bit of... A a bit of both. I would say a bit of both. Like, remember when Nas said hip hop is dead? Yeah. yeah. He was referring to how the music industry or the rap industry was changing towards eliminating the positive messages and suffocating outspoken voices along the lines of activists who will point out the issues amongst our communities and draw up solutions to those issues publicly. But then those voices are faded to black. And the positive things that an artist may do from time to time will uh, not receive any promotion or attention from music media, which in turn, uh, their fans or even us as fans of hip hop in general uh, will not be aware of a positive gesture from an artist of this industry. This is all done by design because whoever owns and controls the stakes of the music industry will purposely campaign negativity surrounding an artist to garner the attention of fans. Who are now invested in the artist's music and what the music media portrays as an everyday occurrence of artists in the industry for example sexy red it's unfortunate but i got to use her as an example our women are not generally behaving the way sexy red is portrayed throughout her music videos and uh even her social media posts yeah i mean we, we can't walk into a Niji community and immediately find a young Niji woman twerking to her favorite Sexy Red song on a daily basis. Like, that may be every once in a while, but not on a daily basis. But guaranteed, that's the agenda of the hip-hop industry. They want our people to be represented as such. In the eyes of the people who remote control the music industry, the negativity surrounding the music artists will become creditable in the minds of fans of the music, making things more personable for fans to believe that their favorite artist is now relatable. We are, us as adults, we can easily point out the problem, but this is why the music industry's focus is not necessarily on adults. It's on the children. You know, you, you brought up Biggie, Pac, people we grew up listening to. Think about um, the NWA, think about Wu Tang, think about the locks, think about some of the groups we grew yes. up loving. The message wasn't always the best, but they articulated a story and there was talent involved to where we can appreciate it. Now there's absolutely no talent, there's no substance, there's nothing. It almost seems like it's blatantly in our face. This is what they're gonna they're gonna weaponize this form of music and they're going to put this form of music as it relates to our people. When you look at the history of black people in 2024, they're gonna show you sexy red. Yep. Do you think that was by design? By design. That was by design. Um, and it's getting progressively worse every year we look at it. And I tell people this all the time, like that, that are involved in the music. Like, for example, like if you take a look at the top five streaming services, they are to blame too. Not just the record companies. Yeah. According to um uh what was it? I think it's called Radar Tech or Tech Radar. I, I recently looked at their analysis on the top five music streaming services of 2024. They got Spotify number one. They got Tidal at number two. And some company I never heard of before is uh, Kyo, Kyo Buzz or something like that as number three. Co Buzz or Q, I don't know. Number four, Apple Music. And number five, number five is Amazon. Now, I want them to look at how things are ran. Like, what all of these streaming services have in common? What do they have in common? They are, they are realistically paying each artist less than a penny per stream. And that's a big problem because not only, not only 
are the, some of these artists are selling our people out, but they selling our they selling our people out for nothing now. Mm. Spotify is giving people zero point zero zero five cent per stream. So say for example, Sexy Red, she did a million streams. She only made five thousand dollars. Wow. Title zero point zero eleven cent. She did a million streams. 11,000 Apple 0. 0.007 cents all less than a penny she did a million streams 7,000 so just okay just those three alone is 20 no 20 I was about to say 22 that's 23,000 right there but can you imagine how much money the streaming services and the record companies are making from that a dollar 99 cent sale at that one single Yep. And it was streamed over three million views. If you calculate all the three, the three I just gave you, and the artists were, the artists were, and it's not funny. I gotta laugh some of that negativity off. It's really not fun. Oh. It's really not. But the artist only receives less than a penny of that profit. I gotta stress that issue and give or take those streaming services or the record companies are six million, seven million, just with those three examples. And I have a solution to that, but. People got to look at that. Like, is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Is it really worth being in this industry for change? I mean, nothing. Pennies, pennies to their dollars and making our people look bad. Is it really that worth it? Right. What's the end game to all of this as the music continues to go in a downward spiral? The sexy res, the, you know, the, the trash artists. What does this look like in the next 20 to 30 years? The black community in general i believe there's going to be a positive change i'm always the type that's going to look at the positive and the negative side but i see a positive change happening because i'm gonna give you an example recently um april i believe it was april of 2024 2024 this year spotify changed its terms of service y'all may be familiar with this but it made it more difficult for those uh who consider themselves to be independent artists to gain money from streams of their songs. And the reason why I'm focusing on, on streams is that's where their money at. Now, people say they make money off of tours. They do. But more than half of that is going to the record companies. I'm focused on the stream because that's where the money is for them. Now, instead of being paid for every stream accumulated, this is just on Spotify, which is number one, by the way, accumulated by each song, whatever the independent artists were published on the platform, Spotify enlisted a threshold now that an artist must meet in order to gain, um, in order to begin gaining money from each stream. So let's just say that an independent artist publishes a song that accumulated 500 streams within that one year. Spotify now requires that you have to have a total of 1,000 streams within that year before you get paid from that song, okay? No matter how many songs you put out. Now, there's a catch to that. Here's another part to that that people are unaware of. Now, some people may assume that, you know, a thousand streams will be easy for them to pick up because of their little their current fan base. However, Spotify enlisted a requirement that made an independent artist uh, have to meet a minimum requirement of unique listeners for each song mm -hmm. and that unique listener has to has to be legit and they're not telling you what number of unique listeners it has to be in other words they're withholding that from public information public knowledge people have no idea what that unique number is this means that they can pay an independent artist whatever they want whenever they feel like it yeah because spotify now took over paying music royalties and keep in mind, oh, let me let me add this and keep in mind that these streaming services got to report to um uh what what are those comp ASCAP and BMI. So how much you being paid as an independent artist is now determined by people like Spotify if you use their services. And I'm pretty sure they got an algorithm and it's controlled by AI, but that would determine which listener will be considered a unique listener according to their standards. At least the door wide open for fraud, okay, to occur. And that's what this music industry is about. Like, it's always been that way. It's about fraud. 
I believe the solution, and to answer your question, brother, I'm getting into it now. I know I'm long winded. No, 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 the, the solution to this, at least for independent artists in this sake, I'm going to answer this, is to go straight to consumer. Like, skip the middleman by having your own website and sell digital copies of your music to your fans directly. 